Hi, and welcome back to my hugely over-ambitious CPU project. So, in the last video, we built this 16-bit counting register. Now, I've uh, worked on this a little bit. I've, um, I've taken most of the, uh, the temporary wires out, and I've, uh, I've put these um, more permanent wires in. So, this has taught me that uh, 16 wires is the absolute limit of what I'd ever like to put into uh, into a one section of a breadboard like this and uh, I've replaced the larger 3mm LEDs with these uh, smaller 2.2mm I think ones um, I actually wish I had a few more of these but because uh, they do tidy things up a little bit okay but I don't actually want to uh, spend too long on this circuit today I have built these ones. Now, this circuit in the middle is basically half of the uh, the circuit we saw before. Apart from, I've moved the output LEDs over to the left here. I've got uh, two of the uh, the four bit counters, and uh, I've I've already routed. The, uh, the outputs and the inputs. I've got uh, one set of outputs here and I've, got, I've duplicated them out over here for uh, a piece of work I'll, uh, I'll be doing in the future. So if we connect our clock into the count up pin we can uh, see that's working quite nicely. Okay so this circuit, now I basically built this to test um, a few features and bits of functionality in relation to the, the registers, but I'll, uh, I'll walk you through it. What I've got here is uh, an 8-pin dip switch, and that's uh, wired up to these two SIL resistor arrays. So what I'm attempting to do here is construct a, a TTL signal. So actually I'll, I'll just explain what I'm doing there. So for each of those, at the top we have a 5 volt rail and at the bottom we have a ground. Now a TTL signal is got some very sp um, specific voltage levels associated with it. We like to think of um, the off state as being ground and the on state as being 5 volts, but nothing's ever quite that clean. So instead there are specifications about um, what counts as, a, as an on and what counts as an off. So if we take the line between there, the as an input to a TTL chip, anything under 0 0.8 volts is regarded as definitely off, and anything over 2 volts is regarded as definitely on. And there's actually um, a second set of specifications for the output of the chip where anything uh, chips should always output less than 0 0.5 volts for an off and greater than, I think it's 2.7 volts. So obviously these, uh, these specifications um, are designed to, uh, to give this nice little bit of tolerance in the middle where... Uh, you can maybe lose a little bit of voltage from uh, one thing or another. So here's my uh, my switch. Now what I've got is um, I've got one resistor that ties this to ground and I've got another resistor that ties it to 5 volts. And then the output from my circuit is here. So 
each of these, this circuit is effectively replicated eight times across here. So with this switch open, this line can be expected to float up to 5 volts. Now this is a 2.7K resistor and this one down here is 200 ohm. So up here with the switch open like this, this should be 5 volts. Um, depending on what you connect the input to, you might measure something slightly different there, but uh, this is about as far as my understanding goes, so we may as well stick with it. So if I close this switch, what happens is we form a circuit. So when we have um, resistors in series like this with a tap in the middle, it forms what's called a voltage divider. So what we have is 2,700 plus 200 ohms is 2,900 ohms in total. So the actual output here is going to be our 5 volts divided by 2,900 multiplied by the 200. So if you imagine like the resistance as a, a, a proportional spread up here and when we stick our, our tap in we're basically dividing the voltage between ground and our whatever our upper rail is um, proportionally by which side amount of resistance is above or below it. So I punched these numbers into a calculator and I came out with 0 0.34 volts is what we should be getting out of here when the um, switch is closed. Now in an ideal world I would have done that before building the circuit but it worked and this is actually below the uh, 0 0.5 volts, so uh, we're, we're nice and compliant with what we should be doing. Okay, so um, I introduced this to generate a, a, a set of 8 bits of uh, TTL output to um, provide some testing for uh, other bits of functionality. So. I have a, a set of eight LEDs here, and I have this chip, um, which is a 74LS541. So what this is, is it's an octal buffer line driver with free state outputs. Now, there's actually two variants on this data sheet, um, the 540 and the 541, which are identical apart from the 540 has um, inverted outputs. We've got the 541 here. So what we have here is eight inputs which are the outputs from my uh, dip switch with the resistors attached. We have um, eight outputs and then we have these two enable lines. Now they connect to an AND gate with the little circles on the front here which means these signals are inverted. So in order for this signal to be uh, true, we need both of these lines to be low. So looking back here at the circuit, this one of the uh, inputs is uh, tied directly to, to ground, and this one is on this wire, which is currently high at 5 volts. So if I change that over, the uh, signal we've got on here comes out here and is seen on the LEDs. Now these LEDs are actually wired the reverse of how I would normally do it with ground at the bottom just because the outputs from the chip are up the top and that just made the circuit a lot more sensible but I, uh, I have to point that out so I don't confuse anyone. Now the point of this um, line driver chip is that the outputs are a tri-state. So when the output is not enabled this, rather than meaning it's outputting all zeros, it's effectively it's disconnected from those cables um, for all intents and purposes, so nothing's on there. So if I wanted to, I could get my uh, little DuPont cable here that I, uh, I've made up. It's not perfect, but it does work. I could plug that into where these LED LEDs are, and then I could plug that over here and 
I then see the output from the count register reproduced over here. So that's pretty good. So this is basically the purpose that I, or the reason why I built this circuit to let me experiment with how I can interface these registers to a bus. So I've got the outputs directly there. That's not actually very useful to us. Um, that's what we need to, to look at. But if I disconnect this again and I instead I plug it up here then we're not getting anything out on these LEDs but if I change the state of my input bring it low then these LEDs are showing the output from the switch now what I can then do is we had this uh, load line, so if I bring that low now, then these registers have loaded the value from my uh, my bus, which is just this one cable connecting the two boards at the moment, into this register. Stop the clock for now, and then if I bring that line back high again, which turns the load off, then uh, then it holds that, that value. So then I can switch this back off again, so I'm no longer presenting this to our, our miniature bus. And then if this uh, count register starts clocking again, it's, it then starts clocking from our new value. If I switch the load on without that connected, it continues to behave exactly as if there was no wires connected to the input at all, which is what we expect. So let's stick that value on there. So I could uh, change the value on these dip switches. Doesn't change up here until I bring the load signal low. And there we go. OK, so. If I uh, unplug this cable again temporarily. Now we've got eight lines here which are the inputs to this register and we've got eight lines here which are always the output. Now we've discussed how these eight lines here could be permanently connected to the bus because they don't affect anything until we bring the the load signal low to, uh, to to tell the register to load but these outputs are always outputting so we need to work out a way of, uh, of connecting these lines to the bus so we can uh, conditionally get the signal from uh, from different inputs asserted onto the bus now a very obvious way of doing it after looking at this circuit is we could put another one of these LS541s over here and uh, and that would allow us to uh, to drive the bus we take the uh, the output lines low on that and that pushes the outputs up to here which then puts it onto the bus and you know, that's going to work um, but I think there's a problem with that and that's what the subject of um, my next video is going to be but for now, I'm just going to leave it at that because I'm very conscious my videos have been uh, longer than I would like them to be. So uh, I'll, uh, I'll leave it there. Thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll uh, hopefully get the uh, next video done soon.